Welcome back to the Rules of Engagement. Before I jump into our second segment, let me remind you guys, if you missed any of these episodes or you just want to leave a question to be answered next episode, go check out our YouTube uh, videos, youtube.com slash official. MLGSC2, also every single game from WCS America, every single game from the MLG Winter Championships, everything we do here on our YouTube site for free in 1080p quality content. Go ahead, check it out. There's also a lot of cool play of the days. We try to crank one of those out for every WCS day. Awesome, awesome plays from some awesome, awesome players. Our second segment is going to be Moonglade versus the STC. Going to be taking a look at the Star Station, which is the first game of their series. And we're going to talk about uh, basically the patient style of Zergris here that Moonglade really shows how, how to use to the highest level. First of all, we're going to talk about how to deal with Widow Mines in the early game with small Marine Widow Mine pokes. Then we're going to talk about in the mid game how to properly engage a Terran army. And then in the late game, how to use those Ultralists to win the actual game. So we're going to start off at the 12 minute mark. And, you know, both players have been macroing up. Uh, we can see, you know, three base to, to three base Zergs just setting his fourth up. Uh, Mutalisks, speed leans, speed banings, ver speed banings versus basically a lot of the marines and window mines. The first attack from the Terran player is heading out. Now this is a, an attack that will almost never just straight out win the game, but if a Zerg isn't efficient at defending this, they lose too many units to the window mines, all of a sudden the Terran can just keep rallying units at the Zerg until the Zerg eventually collapses. So it's key here against Widow Mines. It's almost similar to Siege Shanks. It, you, you can't catch them as off guard as, as with Siege Shanks. But if you can, uh, before they get the Drilling Claws upgrade, if you can catch them when they're unburrowed, realize that Bane Leans will kill them very fast. With Seed Shanks, anything. If you get you know, Speed Leans and on top of Seed Shanks, you're happy. With Widow Mines, you have to kill them basically instantly because they only get one shot off anyway. If you want to be efficient, ideally you kill them before that shot gets off. And that's where the Bane Leans come in. And a Bane it takes three Bane hits to kill Widow Mine. So you saw there three Bane's came in, three of the Widow Mines died, the other three are very hurt. They all used their attacks as well, and now Moon is able to clean it up very, very efficiently. So always try to catch Widow Mines off guard. Use your map vision to know when a Terran's pushing out. And if they're not being careful enough with leapfrogging their Widow Mines, always having one burrowed, always having them spread out, jump on them with the Bane's and blow them all up. And that's something that will happen. You know, yes, uh, theoretically, Terran. Maybe we'll, we'll never have their window mines clumped up like that, but I can guarantee you, if it happens to the SCC, one of the best players in the world, it's going to happen to the guys you plan that as well. So look out for that. Keep constant view of your opponent's army. The moment that they, they uh, unburl a whole bunch of window mines, run in there and try to take them out with all of your bandits. Now, in the mid game, one thing that's very important is that Terran continues to be aggressive with these widow mine marine forces, is that when one of these forces pushes out, you either want to do what we just saw and entirely crush it, or you want to force it to run away, then you back away and rebuild forces, because you know Zerg can rebuild forces faster than Terran player. So you run in here, you see if you can crush an army. All right? You do what you can. When, when it starts retreating, the one thing you don't want to do is you don't want to chase it too much. So notice how Moonglade, he, he, runs, he runs back up, uh, up and to the right. He doesn't go ahead and chase all these Marines. The reason why? Well, if he chased the Marines, what happened? Well, maybe the STC would fall out of his chair, the Marines would get surrounded, and, and it would die. Or maybe the STC, being a great player, would stim, he'd kite backwards, and as you chase them, all of a sudden, you're running into choke points. More and more of your units are hitting buildings. Uh, they're they're like being, being distracted. You might run over widow mines that are being laid out as the Terran retreats. And even if you get into base, uh, you have to charge up a ramp. It's almost never good to try to run down that Terran army because he's going to turn around and fight in an advantageous position for him. But when you get the Terran to back up, it gives you a chance to try to snipe a building, it gives you a chance to take an expansion. So right here, that's exactly what Moonglade does. The units that chased the Marines, you saw how ineffective they were, but at least he was able to kill that fourth command center, which is a very, very important kill. You do not want to let a Terran get a fourth base if you can help it, at least until you have that Hive Tech up in play. Then even once you have Hive Tech, the, the standard Zerg versus Terran play is still going to be around killing that fourth base over and over and over again. So going forward here, we see the same thing, right? Terran's moving out. And again, this is an army that if you can, if you can spot it moving out, you can do one of two things. If you can corner it and, and totally trap it and kill it, that's great. If it starts to run away and you can't get that surround, let it run away. Don't try to chase Terran armies too much. Just focus on uh, macroing up, getting more drones, getting more units, and then crushing your next force. So here we are, Moonglade's waiting to get a few uh, banings. He's going to come in here. And again, the Terran army backs away. He doesn't chase it. 
And Terran Army stayed on to creep, and he, and uh, that would allow the Zerg units to be fast enough to overrun and kill the entire Terran Army. And then he would have done that. But as he backs away, he's like, okay, I can't quickly surround and take the force out. Don't chase that Terran force. Be patient. Patience is really the name of the game in Zerg versus Terran. As long as you're trying to plan for that late game. And we can see Moonglade doing that, going for the high tech. So again, another Terran army moves out. Moonglade is going to say, okay, we'll wait till it gets a little bit closer. We'll see where it goes. If I can find an angle where I can surround it and kill it, I'll do that. If I can't, I'm not going to chase it back to his base. And so right now, this is the moment that Zerg's waiting for. A Terran commits to a corner of the map, or they commit deep into creep. And all of a sudden, as a Zerg player, you can say, you know what? You may be able to shoot that hatchery, but now where is your army going? I don't have to chase you and, and, and run over the unknown. I can just come in here, even using the Mulus to cut off a potential medevac or tree path, and totally annihilate that force. That's exactly what a Zerg waits for. It's the moment where they can surround and take out Terran army, not chasing after it over potential widow mines through buildings that'll you know really path the Zerg units. At the same time, of course, small squads, uh, small squads of speedings or whatever. You want to use those guys to defend this type of draw play, or, or if you have the space and time, you can send your whole army back. Uh, the moment, the most important thing there is to notice that he didn't freak out about the drops, just running the, the drones away, letting the hatchery take some damage in, in both cases. As long as you minimize the drone losses, the most important thing is controlling that major engagement that was up here at the top right. So now we see he's starting to transition to Ultralis. And Ultralis is a unit that it's very uh, important to know its stats. Okay, one thing, it's very great against most mid-game armies, right? Your, your Protoss opponent has Stalker Colossi. Ultralis will destroy that. Your Terran opponent has uh, Marine, Widowmine, Hellbats. Ultralis will do very well against that, unless there's an insane number of Widowmines. What they're not going to do well against is if your opponent has five minutes from when they see you go in Ultralis to build up a whole bunch of Immortals, a whole bunch of Marauders, uh, transition to air, you know, so, something like that. But, uh, Ultralis can be countered, but it takes time. So when you're doing this Ultralis transition, the most important thing to keep uh, in mind is that they're not good defensively against drops, right? Uh, if my opponent drops behind my mineral line here, an Ultralis can't even attack it. It has to walk all the way around, and you, actually I don't even know if Ultralis can even fit back there ever. So they're very bad against drops. And if you sit around in them, like I said, your opponent can build up a lot of Marauders, they can build up a lot of Immortals, to get potentially counter the Ultralis. So the goal of the Ultralis isn't to just hang around and build that Doom Death Army. The goal of them is, okay, they're very strong, I can go and attack and take them out right now. So that's exactly what he's going to do. He's waiting to build the Ultralis, we're going to fast forward this to the next couple small engagements, and now all of a sudden the Ultralis are starting to be produced. And as soon as you have Ultralis, what you want to do is you want to track their army, Pin it back where it can't really be always attacking you, and then you can attack them and take out their key bases. So here he was able to trade off enough speedings and baiting so he can go ahead and remake Ultras. This is a very familiar spot for most of these Zerg players. It takes a little bit to get those Ultras out, but once they get out, you always do the same thing, right? Uh, let's actually just let's talk about here. So you find where their army is. If their army is on the right side, your Ultras should be on the right side going to kill their army. If their main army is on the left side, your Ultras go and kill that main army. Now, if the army's back defensively, that's your goal. Your goal is to get them to, be, to flee from the Ultras and be defensive. As soon as they're defensive, as soon as you're confident enough that, okay, I have all my Ultras out, I have a couple Infestors with them, that's when you want to take out their fourth base or the fifth base, take out those planetaries. So right now, I mean, you can sit for a couple of seconds to get the Banings out, whatever you need, but then you want to go straight for that planetary fortress. For a moment, he backs away because he thought this army would commit up the left side. Now he says, okay, it's going to kill a peripheral base. Use the Ultras aggressively. Always, always, go, always go on the attack with the Ultras. Take out that planter fortress. On the attack is where Ultras really shine. And then you can back away because you don't want to chase Terran armies that will hide away from you unless you have the fungal growth. So you back away. Then again, it's, it's going to be the same thing. Wherever the main army is, put the Ultras there. He's afraid it was on the left side. He was going to move on the left side. Now he's getting a few more overseers to keep track of Widow Mines. Where's the Terran army and where's the Terran fourth base? Those are two things you care about when going Ultratus. He sees the armies on the right side. These Ultratus are going to move on to the right side. And then they're going to say, okay, goal number one, smash the army. All right, we'll, we'll wait till it gets over here uh, until it's a little bit cornered. As soon as it's trapped, I go and I smash the army. Perfect surround there. Seeker missiles are kind of annoying, but they're not really going to be that big a deal with Ultratus. Then step two, okay, I killed the army. Well, I only have five Ultras left, so I can't attack right now. Remake Ultras really quickly. 
the instant these eight ultras are done, those times eight just till those guys get done, the instant these ultras get done and are all ready to mass up, go on the attack again immediately. That's exactly what Moonglade is doing. He really gets a little apprehensive when he sees these, these ravens, but he wants to go down there and take out the space as soon as possible. Eats a couple seekers and then goes in, kills the army, proceeds to kill the expansion. This is exactly how you play Ultras. Now at this point we can see he's up 50 food and tearing players out of money. All he has to do is, is force the army back on the defensive and then take out this bottom base and he's going to win the game. And that's exactly what he does. So a couple of things to keep in mind. What really determined this game is Moonglead's knowledge of how to use Ultras. You always use him aggressively. You don't sit back and defend because you sit back and defend even if you kill their army, just rebuild it. Terran has insane economy. Terran has almost always the best economy of any race in the late game because they're going to have all those mules at their disposal. So you don't want to sit back and, and, and just take hits, trade armies, because you know over time they're going to be adding more and more tech labs on their barracks, get a lar larger marauder force, and then it's going to go bad for you. So you wouldn't do what Moonglade did. Be very aggressive with the Ultras. Consistently deny your opponent's planetary fortresses. Even if it's not insanely cost efficient, they don't have any planetary fortresses. They have nowhere to drop those mules, and they're going to starve out. So also remember, try to catch those Widow Mines off guard. And then also very important, Moonglade never let Widow Mines hang around. Every time after a battle, he always was very sure to keep overseas with the army, kill off those Widow Mines. If a Terran gets to the point where they have 20, 30 Widow Mines, and they, they just stay at that number throughout every engagement, Every engagement, you're going to bleed off so many units, it's extremely painful for a Zerg player. You've got to keep that Widow Mine count low, so it's you have basically able to micro against them. Once the count gets very high, the micro gets almost impossible, you're pretty much screwed. So keep killing off Widow Mines, keep the Widow Mine number low. Also, don't chase the Terran army to mid game. If they're retreating and you chase them, you're allowing them to decide where the battle takes place. They can turn around at any moment. They could wait till you cross the Widow Mine, they could wait till they go up a ramp. They can wait till they get reinforcements and fight you on their terms. So try not to chase a Terran. If they, if they back away, go and kill one of their peripheral bases. If they don't have peripheral bases, then you should just be happy macroing up and having them on the defensive. Remember, use those Ultras aggressively. Straps up our second segment. We'll take a short break and be right on to segment number three.